Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we've got a gear review for you. Everything from new reels to new baits to new terminal. Let's go. Gear reviews, as many of you know, are one of my favorite videos that Tim and I get to do. It lets our inner tackle junkies run wild. There are always new things coming to market, right? Be it rods and reels, endless baits, different kinds of hooks and weights, gear for the boat, you know, new equipment for you to wear so that you can be out here on a cold day. There are so many different things that come to market and some of them are amazing. A lot of them, not so much. So these gear reviews are a way that Tim and I can go crazy, right? We buy everything that comes to market and we play with all that stuff. And out of that, those gems start showing up, those special baits, those special pieces of equipment that stand out. And we collect those and we bring those to you guys. So today, this is a hodgepodge of random gear from all sorts of different companies all sorts of different corners of the industry, but these are things that I think will make a significant difference in your fishing if you're looking for something in each one of these categories. Let's kick it off with the reel, okay? This is from Shimano, the brand new SLX70A, and I'm very happy that we got our hands on one between us, we were able to track down one so that we could play with it and really get to know this reel. I'm so excited about this reel because let me pick this guy up. This is the Shimano SLX 70 MGL, the previous generation of this new reel. If you guys were around for the buyer's guide series at all this year, you know that this was probably the reel that we were most excited about at any price point. Uh, that SLX 70 MGL is a remarkable reel. Uh, it can do so many different things. It's incredible how far that reel cast. Uh, and for the money, I would say it was the best bang for the buck that somebody could pick up. And Tim and I talked about it in a lot of those different buyer's guides reels. I'm sorry, those buyer's guides videos. I did not realize there was a new version coming to market in January. No clue. This new reel is awesome. Here's what you need to know about it. I mean, right out the gate, you can notice some graphics differences, okay? The minor stuff, the things that to me truly don't matter, but they do look different. But here's what you need to know. Number one, the price did not go up. So everything that I'm about to tell you that you're gaining didn't impact price. This reel is 149 bucks retail. And that is, I mean, this was already an insane deal at its price because of what the reel was capable of. This reel takes it a step farther, no change in price. The two things in here that matter, like I'm not a tech geek. I don't really care about specs. Uh, I want to know how a reel fishes, how it feels, how it casts, how it impacts my fishing. That's all I care about. The two things about this you need to know are that it has silent tune. Essentially, without going into specs, that's going to make the reel smoother uh, and quieter. But the thing that I'm stoked about in this reel is that they brought the MGL3 spool to this reel. That is a high-end spool. You're seeing that in high, high-end Shimano's, and all of a sudden that has appeared in SLX. That's mind-blowing to me. What's the deal? What's the deal with an MGL3 spool? It's drastically lighter than the previous spool, which means it starts up faster, okay? How does that impact your fishing? It's very, very simple. The reason Tim and I love the SLX 70 MGL so much is because it's this finessey little reel. It's a small package, but we could take that reel and literally spool it when we were throwing things like lipless or chatterbaits. 
I mean, you could spool it. It was designed with finesse in mind, but its power applications surpassed the finesse. I mean, truly remarkable the distance we got out of that thing. Well, going to an MGL3 spool, dropping that startup inertia, what that means is that on the lighter end, it just got way more functional. So now you've got a reel that you can still take power fishing baits, right? Take a jig, take a lipless, take a chatterbait. You can send those things so far. For Tim and I, we fish a lot of shallow flats. Sometimes you're throwing where the boat literally can't go. It's too shallow for the boat. So you have to have distance to reach the fish. And that MGL spool makes that so much easier. But on the other end of the spectrum, now you can drop down you know, to those 3 16 quarter ounce type baits uh, and be much more effective with them. So an excellent reel for throwing your shaky head, throwing a wacky worm, throwing smaller top waters. It just got that much more capable. And again, no change in price, which blows my mind. Uh, so that's the first item. Again, these items are at complete random. Uh, they're from all corners of the industry. Next up is one that Tim and I are super excited about. Most of you probably know that we have our little tactical underspin that we built with Dirty Jigs. It's a bestseller. There's a reason. These things are amazing. Little tiny downsized underspin, perfect for throwing uh, everything from like a 2.8 up to like a 3.3, a 3.8. It's got a super strong hook, but the hook is tiny. So you can throw it on spinning tackle, no problem. You can set the hook with six pound line all day long, but you can also put it on a bait caster, go up to 10 or even 12 pound line, and you still won't bend that hook out. Even though it's small, it is a heavy duty hook. But what I wanna tell you about today is that there are four new colors. Those colors are something that we worked on literally before this underspin even existed. We worked on the colors on another project and never came out with them. I'm so excited to have these in the underspin. And everything that I talk about today will link in the video description for you in the order that we're talking about it. So we'll talk about the reel first, then these underspins right on down the line. Those links go straight to Tackle Warehouse where you can see these things. So you can see full size images of them. You can buy them if you want to do that, uh, but you can see them very clearly via those links if it's hard for you to see them here. So four new colors. The key is that these colors in the past, all of our underspin colors are a white base. And then there's another color or two over the top of that. This time we've gone with that true gray that true lead colored silver base and then shot the colors over the top of that and they're super natural colors. These colors don't stand out in the water. So like if you're a clear water guy and you've thrown a white based head, you know that head will be out there glowing in front of your swim bait. This gets away from all that. So if you've got clear water, now you've got these super natural tones that you can match up to your bait. So here we've got that lavender over the top of that silver. Here's the green over the top of that silver. Then the last two are black and blue. And that black looks amazing. And then here's the blue, the blue I don't know which one's my favorite. I think the blue is my favorite. The way that blue turned out over the top of that silver base, you put a natural swim bait on the back of that. And I mean, it looks so much like a shad. It's crazy. Again, the white heads, there's nothing wrong with them. We've used them for years and years and years. But once in a while, you, you get that 15, 20, 30, 40 feet of visibility in some lakes, right? And you can see that head out there glowing and you're like, man, I wish that would disappear. Now it can. You have that option to just truly put that natural profile from end to end in the water with those fish. All right, next up, you know what? Let's do this next. I'm gonna pull off my own shoe here. 
We get constant questions about what we wear, why we wear it. Everybody knows I wear flip-flops like 350 days out of the year. I wear flip-flops almost every day, but if it's truly going to be below freezing for an extended period of time, especially if we're hovering right there where it's like freezing rain, I can't do it. I've gotta wear a shoe. Well, it's hard to find shoes that are comfortable on the boat. Deck boots in the last few years have taken over everything. This is Aftco's new deck boot that I've been wearing lately, and I've been so impressed with these guys. Uh, the biggest thing about a deck boot is that they're very low profile, insanely comfortable, lightweight, and waterproof. Deck boots come over from saltwater, right? Where you're dancing around on the deck of a boat with a fish covered in spines and you're trying not to get your feet stabbed. You need something thick. So that's where deck boots came from. But the crossover into bass fishing, I mean, it's so seamless because you've got good grip, but they're not like great big lugs. So you're not, you know, on the front of a bass boat, we've got so many buttons and things that we're trying to tap on. If you're out here in great big winter boots, it'll drive you insane. So, well, at least for me, it drives me nuts. But a deck boot where they're lower profile, but waterproof, so I don't have to have some giant boot on. There's room in there, they're, they're super, I have wide feet and I'm still able to put on a thick wool sock and put them in there and they're not squeezing my feet. So there's tons of room in there. Uh, and then again, they're super lightweight. It's just, a very, very comfortable way to solve that problem, to get a true waterproof shoe that is comfortable on the boot, on the, on the deck of the boat, that's not weighing you down. Uh, that is a hard balance to find. And those Aftco deck boots have really, really impressed me. Uh, I have been beating mine from the day that I got them just to see uh, and they've done remarkably. I've been very impressed with those. Next up, let's, let's go over here and we'll work our way back across through all the baits. How about that? Uh, next up from Rod Glove. This is not a new product. Sometimes the things that we bring to you are brand spanking new, uh, but we've taken the time to test them. Other things are things that we have really put through the paces and have decided are impacting our fishing. And even though they're not brand new, we want to bring them to you because we think they'll impact your fishing too. Uh, that brings us to these rod gloves. Uh, and this, so rod glove makes also, I've, well, this is my rod locker and all the rods are in rod gloves, but they're buried under all these baits. So I can't pull them out for you. I didn't really think that through, uh, but this is their tournament series. So here's one that's open. They make them in casting and spinning. The casting are obviously lower profile. They're not as wide as spinning, but these are neoprene sleeves, okay? You can get rod gloves in neoprene. You can also get them in that webbing material. Traditionally, I use the webbing type sleeves because they're lighter weight. A lot of the neoprene sleeves on the market are super heavy. And when you put them on your rod, they really weigh down the tips. And I just personally don't care for that. When I picked up these tournament series, I was shocked that they're made out of a much thinner neoprene and almost all of that weight is cut off. So you're able to get a neoprene sleeve because the neoprene protects your rods so much better than anything else. Uh, it's truly, it truly protects those rods. And you can see, I mean, it's not weighing down the tip of that rod at all, right? It's not all bowed over. Uh, so neoprene is the best thing that you can put your rods in before you put them in your rod locker or in your truck or wherever you're, you store your rods to keep them safe. But those heavy sleeves, I just, I don't like this thing. I don't like that over time on my rods. This tournament series cut so much of that weight out that I was super surprised 
that I'm able to go with a neoprene sleeve and, and basically completely eliminate that heavy weight on the rods. It's the best of both worlds. And then I saw the price on them. I don't want to quote the price because I'll probably get it wrong, but I was shocked at how inexpensive they are. Shocked. Uh, because neoprene sleeves always cost a fortune and these did not at all. Like they're competitive with traditional, uh, the traditional style rod sleeves. Uh, they're just, it's one of those things that's been around a little while and when I realized what they were, I had totally missed it. Uh, and it made such an instant difference for me that I wanted to tell you guys about it. So again, that's that tournament series uh, of rod gloves and I'll link that in the description. Next up, I don't know, we got a bunch of baits here now. Let's go with the Swammers. Okay, the Exxon Swammer is a swim bait that Tim and I fish a ton. Um, it's got a super aggressive kick, but it's not that wide body. It's not like a Kitek type kick. It's more of a rolling type of kick and the fish respond to it really well. The last couple of years, I've done tons of damage with that Swammer on everything from A-rigs to single swim baits, throwing them on underspins, throwing them on bare lead heads. Uh, they just work. But there were some sizes missing. The larger, so check this out. This is the four inch, and then this is the big one. This is the 5.5, okay? Look at the size gap between those. I was really pumped to see that Exxon came out with a 4.75 that is right in the middle of those sizes. It's right where it needs to be. 4.75 is like that the bread and butter size. If you're throwing single swim baits, if you're throwing them on a full size A-rig, 4.75 is the deal. And this bait fits perfectly. Uh, they absolutely needed that in their lineup. I was super excited to see that they had done it. And then check this guy out. At the other end of the spectrum, they came out with a 2.75. The 2.75 is awesome. This little guy is deadly. In fact, let me see which of these underspins is the smallest. Let's rig one up. Let's put them on there and take a look. Look at that little guy. I mean, just a dream size. Super finessey little swim bait that you can roll on the tiny underspin. You can throw it on a bear, like a one-aught guppy head. I love to take a one-eighth ounce one-aught guppy head, put tiny swim baits on them, throw them out and just slow roll bottom with those things. I also like to do the same thing with the one-eighth ounce in our underspin. It is just such a deadly way to catch fish. And that little 2.75 is awesome. We all love throwing the Kitek. That tiny Kitek is a bait that you could tie on every day of your life and catch a bass. But more and more people are throwing that particular bait. And the Kitek has such a wide kick that I feel like fish get conditioned to that. Whereas this little guy, very similar size. This is actually even just a fraction smaller but it's completely different action. It's that body roll, it's that tail twisting and kicking, night and day different action, something that those fish just are not seeing. So both of those sizes, the 4.75 and the 2.75, I would say both of those just absolutely hit it out of the park and should instantly be added to the arsenal of anybody who likes throwing a swammer. Next one up. Um, let's do these two because they kind of go together, even though they're completely unrelated. This is the fish roller by Raid, okay? Japanese company. You guys may have seen me catching fish on this in videos already. You know that strolling, whether we're talking about fishing high in the column, like hover rigging, super lightweight baits, or we're talking mid strolling, bottom strolling, mid strolling is something I love to do. Where you take a minnow profile, you put your jig head in that, 
and then you shake that rod tip while you reel and that bait rolls while it comes through the water, through the water column. It's like fishing a swim bait, but without the paddle tail. It's all about body roll instead of tail kick. It's remarkable how well fish respond to that. I mean, it's truly, it's remarkable. This guy, this raid fish roller is just one of those baits that I have connected with and the fish just eat it. They just flat out eat it. Uh, I've been very, very impressed with that bait. Solid head, uh, it's kind of hollow cavitied in the middle, although it is sealed across the bottom. Uh, but I like to put them on that jig head, throw them out mid column and just shake and reel. Uh, and it, it's incredible how the fish respond to them. It's a flat sided bait, some great two toned colors. We've talked about this before. Uh, if you're mid strolling, I either like flat sides where you can really see that action, or in my mind, the fish can see that action, or I like good two-toned baits. Because if it's a round bait and it's all one color, that thing's rolling. The only thing you really see moving is the hook, right? But if you've got two tones on the side, two unique colors, and it's rolling, you can absolutely see that action in the water. So that's an awesome bait that I've been really happy with totally unrelated but i'm going to put them together to show you this is the only hook that we've got today and this is something i'm so excited about from owner this is the range roller okay this hook is specifically designed for strolling they make it from like a one don't quote me i think a 196 so so micro all the way up to like a 316. So you can do everything from ultra finesse, you know, three, four pound line, insanely lightweight, tiny baits, just barely working that thing and dancing in the water to that more traditional mid strolling or even bottom strolling, which again, I've said over and over, I prefer to mid stroll or to bottom stroll because I can do it with heavier weights and I can cover a lot more water. Uh, there's not a lot of times where I'm fishing so slowly that I want to go to those micro weights. A lot of people are, but for me, I like to cover water. When I'm fishing, I fish aggressively. And by going to those little bit heavier weights, uh, I'm able to cover tons of water and fish very effectively, very quickly. But let's talk about this owner range roller, okay? Hopefully you can see it. What you need to notice here is that all of the weight sits super high up. In fact, it goes all the way up even with your line tie point. It even goes above it a little bit. So there's a couple of things here. When you tie to this, because that lead comes up the front of that eyelet, your line literally can't roll to the front. It has to stay vertical or behind. The value in that is that when we're trying to get these baits to roll, especially the closer to the boat that they get, if your line ends up in the front, so a lot of the jig heads that we're adapting for this uh, are just jig heads made for other things, but people are using those ball heads and they're mid strolling with them. But the closer it gets to the boat, the harder it is to get your bait to want to rock. Way out, it's pretty easy. They rock great, but the closer they get, if there's anything wrong, you start to lose the action. Especially if that line is forward, you just cannot get them to dance close to the boat. But with that lead wrapped up the front of this thing, and this hook is so proven, like this is one of the most popular hooks in Japan for doing these techniques. It's just now coming to the US. But by wrapping that lead up, it forces your line vertically, which allows you to dance that thing even as it's coming under the boat and you still get that phenomenal action out of it. The second part is that all that weight sits high, right? Above the midpoint. It's all sitting on top of the hook. The result is that every time you bump it, if you give it a touch of slack, it wants to tip over. So it's naturally, as you bump it, going to want 
to flip flop because that weight sits so high. And then again, you can get this from the tiniest little weights up to more traditional long range, little bit heavier line. I throw a lot of like seven and eight pound line with this technique. You can go even heavier than that if you want to. I'm gonna lay this guy on here and kind of see where we line up. It'll be nice and straight. And this bait, it's got these little like indicator dots on the back, so it's really easy to line up. There we go. So as you see that bait rigged, again, this is just a random bait, but it's a bait that I really like for this technique. And this is a head that I really like for this technique. You can see that that lead is sitting way up high on that bait. If you slack it, it's gonna wanna tip over. That lead's gonna wanna drop. And as a result, it's very easy to get that bait to twist as it's coming through the water column. If you haven't done the strolling thing, you're not understanding what I'm saying. But we have a dedicated video specifically to that. And we have a bunch of fishing videos where we've gone out and kept, caught fish doing the technique. It is taking over a lot of the US bass fishing right now. But this is a phenomenal bait in this application and this is a phenomenal head in this application. Again, that head from owner is called the range roller. All right, on to the next one. We've got a few left here. Let's talk about another tiny bait. From Great Lakes Finesse, this is their snack craw. Again, not a brand new bait. It's a bait that we've been playing with for a while, but it's a really cool bait. There's a huge trend in downsizing baits. You guys know that. Uh, both with bait finesse and with standard spinning tackle. Uh, Great Lakes Finesse is doing some things that are very, very different. This craw is a perfect example. Tiny little craw. They make a great lead head for throwing it. I'll link that in the description. Uh, but I also really enjoy throwing this on a micro Texas rig on my bait finesse gear. I also like using this guy as a jig trailer. But one thing that Great Lakes Finesse, if you're not familiar, familiar with them, these baits are designed around fishing on the Great Lakes, clear water. They've designed their baits to be very dull finishes. In murkier water, lakes where I fish a lot, I don't think that is a big deal. But if you're on a crystal clear fishery, there are times where shine, those fish just turn away from it. And Great Lakes Finesse does these dull finishes on their bait so there's no shine. So they really work well in clear, clear water. But that tiny little craw is an awesome little bait that's worth taking a look at. Again, you can fish it standalone, uh, but I personally really like pairing it up to a micro jig as a jig trailer. But that's a really cool bait that we've been playing with. Uh, I think it will make a difference for you. You know, we've got three or four tiny little craw profiles that we love throwing. We're always looking for more. These are super durable baits as well. They really hold up well uh, and are just another one that I've been very impressed with and it is worth taking a look. All right, we've got two more if I haven't missed anything here. Let's talk about this trap first. From Bill Lewis. It's been a while since Bill Lewis has put out a new trap, right? Bill Lewis, maker of the rattle trap, the rattle trap. This is their hammer trap. This is a really interesting bait. Night and day different than the rattle trap. Uh, two baits for two very different applications in my mind. I really like this bait. Uh, it's in my mind, so great sound, that's number one. Tons of racket out of this bait. But it actually, for me, it fishes a little more subtly than I expected. A lot of times with a lipless, you really have to burn them to get the action out of them. I mean, you gotta be going fast. And this hammer trap is not that way. I'm actually able to go fairly slow with it. So it's got a moderate sink rate, but it's got this awesome waggle on its way down to the bottom. So for me, this is a bait that I'm fishing over 
and around cover over the top of grass flats emergent grass in the springtime uh, shallow flats where i'm fan casting over that mud but i don't want to hit the bottom and i'm able to fish this slower than most other baits so think of a trap where you're covering water not necessarily bottom hopping that's not where this bait's shining for me this is a bait where i'm covering water but early season where they're really on that trap but if you're going too fast they're not about it this allows me to go at more of a moderate speed rather than burning more moderate so particularly in that colder water those fish can run that thing down and then if i get a short strike and i stall again it's got that awesome swim on its way to bottom and it's a pretty slow swim to the bottom very different than the rattle trap and a very very cool bait if you like throwing traps in the spring that's absolutely one that you should take a look at that's all stock hardware the stock hardware is excellent you can fish that bait straight out of the pack and then last but not least completely out of season but i got to play with this bait in the fall and i was so impressed with it i just made a mental note hey the next time we do a gear review that one's going in there from snag proof this is their zoo pop it's a popper this bite will be here before we know it right i love throwing a popper in the spring the only downside of a popper is that you can't throw it in and around super thick cover. You gotta fish the edges of that stuff. You can't go in the heart of it. There's been a time or two where people have tried to make weedless poppers and it's just never really worked out. This is the first one I've ever seen that is truly functional, truly fishable. So this is, think a frog, okay? Hollow body frog, super heavy, double hook on there heavy wire and then on the back you've got that traditional popper tail feathered tail only there's no hook in it so it's a completely weedless popper but it still has an excellent hookup ratio and that is what has been lacking so this is a popper if your fish are moving up into lay downs early season you can fire right in the heart of that junk and fish that popper in there and you're not getting your treble hooks stuck. Later in the season, bass start chasing bait in the shallows. You can throw right into those little pockets in the grass. You're getting the profile of a popper with all the benefits of a frog. And that's the first time that I have seen it done right. I'm very impressed by that guy right there. And with that, we wrap up our first gear review of the year. I'm sure there will be more. I'm sure thousands of new things will come to market this year like they always do. Tim and I will wade through them all and we will look for those gems. Whether you're looking for a new bait to stroll with, you're looking for that perfect head to stroll with, whether you wanna stay high in the column or get down deep, whether you're looking for a reel that can send it but it can also turn around and fish your finessier little baits. Whatever it is you're looking for, these are things that I think will make a difference in your fishing this year, a tangible difference. If you're looking for something in one of those categories, these are definitely worth the look. There were plenty of things that came to market that weren't worth the look. We left those out. These were the gems. Again, we'll link everything in the video description. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.